What can I do with my Power BI reports, reports that I have in Power BI Reports Server or SSRS? What you'll see here along this section is a list of all of the schedule types that are available. So I'm going to go ahead and start out with a basic single schedule. I want to schedule out a Power BI report. How do I do that? Well, the very first thing you have to do is under integrations, add in your Power BI account. So what you'll see here is I already have two accounts listed. If I click add, I can add in another Power BI account should I have multiple accounts. Uh, we do provide the step-by-step -step instructions and how to uh, verify and integrate your Power BI account with the software using the instructions in the blue box. Now you did notice as well, outside of Power BI accounts, we do have Slack, Dropbox, and then you've got your SQL Server. So this would be for your Power BI report server or um, SQL Server account. You're adding in your URL and domain and username and connecting and saving that for easier use when creating your schedules. The Slack, Dropbox, and Google are used for your destinations and um, you can see here we've got a few accounts added here, but simply adding in your Google account, we can then upload to something like Google Drive for you. So I'm going to go ahead and create a single schedule, and I'm going to start out using for Power BI. What you'll see is a little wizard is brought up. Uh, it'll be fairly similar throughout the process for most of these schedule types. So because I am in the folder PBI, it will default to that, but I can change it if I want it created in a different folder. I'm going to select the account that I am looking for, and then you'll notice you have an option for reports as well as dashboards based on your workspaces um, that you have available to you. They will populate. If I click on this Power BI account, there are additional workspaces that um, this account has access to. For this purposes, I will just leave and use the demo server account. I'm then going to select a report that I would like to use and to schedule. I'm going to go ahead and click on next. You've got your description and keywords, which are optional. Um, the keywords are searchable if you need to be able to search for the schedule later. Now, I did get this red mark, and that simply means that I already have a schedule that exists with this specific name. So I am just going to change the name of this schedule. The next screen is your schedule. So when do you need this report to run? We have a daily option. We've got weekly options. We even have monthly options as well. So if you need something like first day of you know, the month or you can do the first Monday of the month. We do have an annual option. We've got the weekday options or working day, which by default is a Monday through Friday here in the US. And we even have a custom calendar. Now what's great about the custom calendar is I like to use this more so as an exception. So what do you mean by that? Well, under here, you have your exception calendar. So if I decide to set this report to run daily at 7.06 a.m., but I don't want it to run on the holidays, I can go in and say, use my holiday calendar. So based on the dates I've set in my custom calendar, I, do, I want you to skip those days. Even if it is, uh, you know, if I set it to weekly and have it set to Monday through Friday, if Christmas falls on a Friday, I don't want that report to run on a Friday, so it will skip that day and continue on. We do have another option, so if you need something to run, you know, every hour of every, you know, day of the week, you have that option here as well. So very customizable um, as far as the scheduling options that you need. Let me make sure I uncheck this so that I can move on to the next screen. 
So the next um, set of options you're going to have when creating or scheduling your report is the settings of, of the report itself. So the page and height, um, I would do definitely recommend leaving these options as is, and that is simply because after lots of testing, we found that these default options typically work the best um, for the default report um, setup. Now, if you are using very customized reports in Power BI and you've made some changes as far as the page and height, then you may need to modify these just a bit. Uh, we have the rendering options. I definitely always leave these at the default options depending on how long your Power BI report takes to to load, you may need to upside or, or increase the minimum loading time. You may even want to decrease the maximum loading time should, should your report only take 10, 15 seconds to load. What you'll see here is a page number. So if your Power BI report has five tabs um, or pages, by default, this will include all the pages of that report. If you only want a specific page or range of pages, then you, this is where you would specify that. So in my case, if I only want pages one and page three, I can specify that here. I can also do uh, a dash to include, you know, three through five, so I'm skipping out page two. Rendering method, we have three different ways to be able to render a Power BI report. This was created after the first uh, round um, of Power BI reports um, from Microsoft releasing an update, which broke the rendering ability to render reports. Our developers created a couple of workarounds uh, so that no matter what happens on the Microsoft Power BI side, uh, as far as rendering and being able to grab reports, we should still be able to accommodate customers um, by selecting a, a different method. Transparent background and view style, these are options directly in Power BI. So if you're using transparent um, backgrounds and you do or do not want them to be included, um, just select which option uh, pertains to you. Same with the view style, we have the actual size, fit to page and fit to width, which are also options directly in Power BI. I'm going to go ahead and click on Next, which will bring you to Report Filters. So Report Filters work just like they do in Power BI. You have your basic filtering as well as your advanced filtering. For the purposes of a single schedule, I am going to go ahead and bypass this because we will cover this in a data-driven schedule. Refreshing data sets. If you need your uh, data set refreshed before your report runs, this is where you would go ahead and select the account and the workspace that the data set lives in. So in my case, um, I've got a few here that I can select. And you do have some notification options. This is specific to the data set refresh only to notify upon completion, on failure, or don't notify me at all. So I can select the data set I need and drag it over. And you will need to uh, set the seconds before running the report here. So if your data set takes five minutes to refresh, you will want to go ahead and set a 300 uh, seconds before running the report. I'm going to go ahead and delete this again for this purposes. It is not needed. So now I'm going to go ahead and set my destination. Under the add, I've got all of the destinations that are available to me. Email, disk, fax, Slack, Dropbox, Google Drive, all of these options here. Because I have my default destinations already pre-set up, I can simply select one here and then click OK and all of my settings that I already have in there. I can go ahead and edit. So you'll notice I don't have much information listed, but I can then go ahead and simply edit or change any little option that I need. So in an email destination, you do have your two, um, your CC, BCC, subject, attached. So this is just an email um, template pretty much that you're setting up or the email that it's going to be sent 
it can be sent to multiple recipients, groups. Uh, we do have the PBRS address book, so if you're using the address book, I can go in here and select um, who I would like to send this to, hit OK, and it is added in. Under Format, we have all of these different format options here. You'll notice with PDF, we have the PDF data only and we have the Excel data only. What that allows you to do is actually grab the actual data, um, whether it's the summary or underlying data of a report. So for this instance, I'm gonna go ahead and select PDF. If I enable PDF options, I will have additional uh, op permissions, I would say. One of them here, which is very popular, is password protecting your PDF file. So if, even if you are sending this via email, let's say it's accidentally sent to the wrong person, unless they have the password that you've specified, they would not be able to open up that attachment. The naming tab uh, does allow you to uh, customize the output file name, which is what, in my case, I've done here. I've, you know, I've got the name of my report, and then I have used a, what I call insert. Now, this doesn't apply to this specific schedule because it is an HR report, but I can specify how I want the name of the report and use what we call a PBRS constant. So this will dynamically pull in the current date that it is ran and I can just click and drag that over. You will notice we've got multiple different options here and as I've done, I can just type in that format as well. If for any reason you, uh, you do not have a format type that uh, fits your needs and you've got very something very customized, you can customize the output file extension. So if you want to change it to, you know, uh, something very random, you can that we don't have as an output, you can do so by customizing the output extension here. We do also have the uh, op ability to append the date and time to the report output um, and just select the format that you would like as well. And you can also adjust that date and time. So if I selected the current you know, date, I can then append it, and if I select negative one, that means it's gonna go to yesterday's date. Under miscellaneous, you do have the ability to um, compress the output file, so it's a if it is a very large report and you want it zipped down, you can definitely do so. Um, doing that, you'll have the ability to select your encryption level and um, set the password. You do have the option to defer the delivery of the email as well for um, so many hours. Under PGP encryption, um, if you are using PGP, you do have the ability to use your account here, selecting your um, keyring file for public and private, as well as the uh, entering in the user ID. I'm going to go ahead and click OK here. Now you'll notice I did have this enabled, so I do need to uncheck that before I go in and save. Now what you'll notice here is I can add in another file location as well. So if I wanted to add in a disk destination, um, I can select where I want the report to go. What you'll notice is I've got uh, my file path that I've selected here and I've got my format options. So again, I've got my options that I can select here. And depending on the format, so here there is no additional user configuration options available. I can go to my naming. I still have my miscellaneous and PGP. So for, for every destination type, you will have your miscellaneous and PGP options, um, as well as the naming. I'm gonna go ahead and hit OK here. And I'm gonna click on Next. You've got your exception handling. Typically, you can go ahead and click on Next to skip through this. I will cover um, the report is blank option when using an SSRS report. Um, but covering this part up at the top, this is a uh, default exception handling. So by default, if a schedule or a report does not run within a specific period of time, it will automatically, or complete, I should say, if it is not completed within a certain period of time, it will automatically 
uh, fail the schedule and retry immediately up to three times. After that third attempt, it will consider it failed and set the next run time uh, based on the frequency. Now you can uncheck the auto calculate if you want to set a specific time. I always recommend making sure to set up the time uh, that is going to be appropriate. So if you know your report takes about 30 minutes, you may want to set it to 45 minutes, um, if you, especially if you have other reports or schedules that are running at that time. And you may decide that, you know what, I don't want it to retry immediately. Maybe I want it to wait five minutes and only retry once more um, before um, erroring out the schedule and sending the email notification. I'm going to go ahead and click on next and this is the very last option before completing this schedule and it is custom tasks. With custom tasks, um, I've kind of shown this under the options for default tasks. I have all of these tasks available to me to include. Now again, I can decide, you know what, I need to, after running this report, I need to execute another schedule and I want it to happen after this schedule or report runs. Not a problem, you can do so by simply clicking and dragging this over. What that will do is bring up a, a folder screen that will allow you to select uh, what report you need to run. So you'll notice here I've got my custom, I've got my daily, and I can just select whatever report I need. I do need to create a name for this and I'll just say active report and hit OK. And so that will save that there and you'll notice by default it does say run after um, the delivery of the first report. I do have an options here to actually run it before this schedule as well as both options and again you've got the determination after the successful report delivery or if the report has been produced. So at what at what point do you want to execute this, this additional task? I'm going to go ahead and click finish and what that will do is grab all the total pages um, of that Power BI report and save it and close it out. So now you will see my schedule listed here. That may have felt like a very long time for a basic schedule getting set up. However, I did go through a lot of detailed information there. So that is how you create and set up a basic single schedule. Now, what is a package? I do have one pre-created here. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and edit this one for time's sake, because what you'll notice is your package name, um, create in what folder. You've got your description and keywords, pretty much the same options. If I go to the next um, configuration setting, it's setting up when the report needs to run or reports. So what really is the difference? It doesn't happen until you get to your report options. And this is where you can add in multiple reports. And what you'll notice here, you can add in a Power BI report and then a report from SSRS or PBIRS. So it, it allows you to be able to bring in multiple reports and in from different uh, reporting platforms. Here I have gone ahead and added in two reports. I'm going to go ahead and add in one more just so you can see the layout is just a bit different here. But if I am selecting my report, um, I'll leave it at my workspace and I'll select this report here. I will then go in and select the format for this specific report. And again, same options that I'll have if I'm using this PDF that you've seen before. I have my report filters if I need to set a report filter. I have my report settings. Do I need to refresh a data set? I have my naming. And then I've got the exception handling. You'll notice the top option where the retry executing the schedule is not there, but that is for a good reason. Um, you just have the option for checking if the report is blank, which again, I will cover in a data-driven schedule. I'm going to go ahead and hit OK here. So I've now added in another Power BI report. What you'll see is it is grabbing the number of pages, but I have it here. So I have three different reports here. I can now decide to merge all of these PDFs together into one single file. So if 
you have, you know, maybe the CEO who has three reports that he has to get daily, instead of sending three separate emails, I can package all three reports into one email. Now, if I uncheck this option here, it will send one email with three separate attachments but I can merge all of these reports together. And when I click on merge, I have the additional security options if I want to select it. Um, but it will merge all of them into one. So customer profitability sample report would be the, the first report, and then these two would follow um, accordingly. I was uh, able to customize the name, so combined weekly report, and I used a, a, a constant over. Now, if I have changed these to Excel and left one of them at PDF, I could uncheck and still select the Excel, and you'll have your Excel options here for naming the worksheet or password protecting the workbook. But I could merge those two and still have my one PDF attached as well. So with the merging capabilities, you will notice it is with PDF, Excel, and text outputs only that we can merge. So if you are using PowerPoint or a Word document, uh, we would not currently not have those capabilities here. But those are the three options you have at the moment. And typically, the PDF or Excel are, are the most popular. We do have run package multi-threaded. With multi-threaded, that simply means do you want to run these under multiple threads? So if you select this option and you have your multi-threading set to run you know, three uh, reports simultaneously, if you have nothing else running and this is the only package or schedule uh, that needs to run, all three of these would kick off at the same time if this was enabled. If you need to run them simultaneously, one after the other for whatever purposes, then I would just leave that unchecked and it will run each report one at a time, one after the other. So after adding in those reports, you'll have your destinations. Um, again, I've got my destination set up here. Now uh, I do have a Slack account added. Uh, just to give you an example to see some other options, I'm going to select my account. I can add a comment, and then based on what channels I have access to, I can select all of these options, any of these options here. Again, you've got your miscellaneous and PGP if you need to um, encrypt any of that. So let me just, for testing purposes, I can set that and save it. Now here's the exception handling, and what you'll see is you do have this up here at the top, whereas you didn't when we were under the individual report, and that is simply because the error handling will happen at the package level, not the individual report level. Now, as this was a pre-created schedule, I do have my history tab, which you see is successful here. And um, this will show history by default um, based on what is set up under the system monitor, which I will uh, show you later in this demo. Again, you've got your custom tasks listed here. And then uh, snapshots, which is something new as well because it was a pre-created schedule. You can save a snapshot of the report um, by simply enabling the option and selecting for how many days you want to save it for. I'm going to go ahead and hit apply here to save any changes that I've done and hit OK. So again, recapping with the package schedule, what is the difference between a single and a package? With a package, you can run multiple Power BI reports or SSRS, uh, I apologize, SSRS reports or um, Power BI report server. If you are using that, um, that does include your SSRS or paginated reports as well. So you can mix and match or just have one type. Christian Stevens Software. Bigger data, better business.